Hi, so today I'll be talking about isomerism, and I'll first be looking at structural isomerism, where there are three different types under this um, name. So the first type is chain structural isomerism, or this carbon skeletal structure changes. So either it could become a continuous chain, like pentane, or this continuous chain become more branch. For example, we can have um, two methylbutane. And they both have the structural formula C5H12. However, it is important to note when figuring out chain um, structural isomerism, you should always remember to count the longest carbon chain. Because for example, I could draw um, I could try to draw one methylbutane, which would look like that. However, you can see that this is the exact same as pentane. So there's no such thing as one metal butane because the longest carbon chain is still five okay moving on so position structural isomerism is where the position of the functional group changes could be um like the double bonds or i guess for my example i use chlorine so we can have two um chloropentane or we can have three chloropentane but similar to um, the chain one, if you draw structural isomerism like that, um, there's no such thing as um, four chloropentane. It's the exact same as two chloropentane. Okay, and then the last one is a functional structural isomerism, and this is where the structure changes in a way that you have a completely new functional group. So uh, example here is uh, but 2 in 2 in and its um, functional isomer is cyclobutane. So alkenes and cycloalkanes have the same functional um, have the same general formula because both of these have the formula of C4H8. And that's it for structural isomerism. Okay, so the next isomerism we'll be looking at is geometric. And there are two rules that needs to be followed for a molecule to have this type of isomerism. The number one rule is that there needs to be a lack of rotation. And this could be due to an unsaturated carbon bond um, or it is a cyclic a um, organic molecule. There also need to be at least two different um, functional groups or subs substituents. So for to demonstrate this, I'll be using dichloroethene. So as we can see, there is an unsaturated double bond. We have two substituents. We have chlorine and we have hydrogen. And so the iso the geometric isomerism of this will be just like so. As you can see here, the main difference, well the difference between them is the positions of where the substituents are. And as there is a lack of rotation, um these positions of the substituents are fixed. Okay. So for, to name geometric isomerisms, we just have to add the letter E, oops, the letter E or the letter Z at the front. And to remember which letter we put at the front for which, just remember E is um, enemy, and Z is same side. So, as the substituents here are at 
the same side. You are called the Z dichloroethene. And as they are in opposites over here, this is E dichloroethene. And it's that simple. I guess the main bit is trying to recognize if a molecule has this. And if you see a lack of rotation and at least two different functional groups, it is likely it has this isomerism. Okay, so the next isomerism I'll be talking about is optical isomers. And they're basically just a reflection of the original organic molecule. But for an organic molecule to be able to do this, it first needs a chiral center. And a chiral center is basically when a carbon atom has four different groups attached to it. So as I tried to show here, the second carbon atom ha is the chiral center, which I denote with an asterisk. So let's draw its isomer, just a reflection of it. There's actually more um, to know about these optical isomers, but for now, I'll just be going over the basics. Okay. So how do we name these isomers? Well, the first thing we need to do is a um, number like the heaviest groups. So here, bromine is the heaviest. Then we go over with this one and this group. So, and then the same here. With that, we kind of find the direction. So this is going this way. Ooh, you can see it is, they are moving in contrasting like ways. So as in the left one, you can see the arrows are moving towards the left. Then we call this the L isomer. And similar to the last one, you just put L at the front of a name. So you could just call it L2 um, bromine butane. And here it's going to the right. And instead of R, we actually call it D, which I'm pretty sure is from its Latin name of right. So then this is D2 bromine. Butane. That's optical isomers. So all of the isomers we just talked about is configurational, which basically means we break bonds to um, change the structure. However, there's another type called conformational which is where you don't break bonds. So there is, there needs to be like rotation happening involved. And rotation basically means we have saturated bonds and it is like a chain. It's not cyclic. So a good example of this is um, ethane. And it is hard to demonstrate this type of isomer unless you have a molly mod of it. But if you build a molly mod of ethane, you can see you can kind of twist, you can kind of twist the two um, ends of it. So basically, you are able to twist these two ends of the molly bond. And when you twist them and you look from it from the side so look from the side of it you can see there are kind of two different shapes so we can have um, one that kind of looks like this but the huge bonds are like that and on the other end the circle is the ethane so when you look at it from the side it looks like that or you can also see it like this. That's the ethane. And then, kind of
kind of just like follows the same thing. So what um, these are called, this is called a staggered ethane. And this is called an eclipse. However, um, like ethane is constantly rotating between these two isomers. Um, however, we can kind of infer which one is the more stable one. So maybe pause this video and think about which one would be more stable. The eclipse, where the hydrogens are like directly like at the same side of each other or like staggered where they're kind of you know away from each other so the more stable one would be staggered as this is when the hydrogens are furthest away from each other therefore there is less electron repulsion okay so here are some questions some tips i have for you for these two do jaws Beetle, it just saves you time to like help with all of the structures. And for this one, we go over it as quickly, but it not it doesn't have to be the same substituents on the same side. It has to be the highest priority group, aka the heaviest. different sides. So that's your tips. Okay, so these are the answers. Um, for the first two, you might be like, oh my god, there's too many. But it's actually because sometimes when you draw an isomer, it's actually just an equivalent to another. Don't worry, I also make that mistake, which I did earlier. For example, you can't have um, can't have like two ethyl um, butane because this is the same as one, two, one, two, three, four, five. This is the same as um, three, three methyl pentane because you have to remember to count the longest carbon chain. So it's like you can get, you can get a bit confused. And it's the same with question two. You have to make sure that the isomer you drew is not an equivalent to another one. So always count the longest carbon chain. So for the last one, it can be a bit tricksy because these two are on the same side. So you may think that this is a Z and not an E. However, as I mentioned in my tip earlier, you have to make sure the highest priority groups are on the opposite side, which I did make it clear earlier, but I'll make it clear now. So, bromine is the heaviest, followed by a methyl group is the heaviest. As you can see here, they're on opposite sides. And you can check on the, answer, the questions, the other ones, the bromine and the methyl group are on the same side, so it's a Z. Okay, 